This is the uh, rude guy that put me on speakerphone. I think I made a YouTube about this dude. I, he was the real estate. Now I got a different number. Okay. He's the actual landlord. The actual landlord. Yeah. And we called last time, but he didn't pick up. Okay. And you check the number. So I called him. And I told him that I was interested in the laundromat. And he told me that he was going to call me back because he was busy. So that confirms that that's him, the actual landlord. There's a bunch so of notes here about writing a letter of intent, et cetera, et cetera. Why is that here? We, we did that with, the, with his realtor. But I remember that he told me not to send the LOI because he he like he wanted he didn't want it to negotiate uh, at all the real. But that was one year ago, so I don't know if anything has changed. Maybe we can ask and see what well, they I'm, said. I'm confused. We talked to the guy and he wouldn't take me off speakerphone. It's two thousand square was- feet and they want six thousand dollars a month. Yeah, that was the real thing. Well, I said we write it for a dollar twenty. There used to be a gym there, but it is still a laundromat. The equipment is still inside, right? Yeah. Has it been closed? Yeah, it's closed. There used to be a gym next to it. Which now is uh they just turn it into a family dollar. All right. So yeah. all of this aside, you have the landlord's phone number, and yeah. is this it here? This six three one number. Yeah. Okay. Let's dial Alex and see if we can rent his laundromat from him. And the laundromat is closed. Yeah, it's closed. Got it. Here we go. Yeah, okay. A little vodka? A little dialing music, Paul? <clears throat> Hello? Alex. Sorry, who's calling? My name's Danny. I'm looking at some commercial space. I wanted to uh, talk lease terms with you. Okay. This is Port Jefferson Station. There's a laundry there. Um, I guess it's I guess it's closed. So that's I, I have the right guy. Yes, you got the right guy. That's correct, Alex. I'm Danny D'Angelo, and my partner and I are always looking for laundries with infrastructure. You know, the gas, water, right. electrics here, and you know, Hold bottom there. bottom line, if the rent makes sense, we look for 15 year terms. We need a long lease, obviously, because of the infrastructure. Alone is not right. a laundry. You know, we got to spend the money on the equipment, the uh, right. washers and dryers. It's not glamorous. So, so but... let me give you let me give you the short summary of Please. what happened there. Right. Thank you. Um, the laundromat uh, used to be run and owned by my father. Um, it's now run and owned by me and you know some other members of my family. Um, for many many years, uh, there was an American couple that ran that laundromat. And uh, it was a freaking cash cow. I mean, they were crushing it. Uh, I'm confident you did some research, you know, market research in the area. Uh, It's the only laundromat with anything of a parking lot like what we have there. Um, And it's pretty much on par with the size of all the other laundromats in the area. And it's actually a little bit more accessible. Uh, That shopping center is uniquely zoned in a residential area. It got grandfathered from like the 1900s. Um, so all the other shopping centers are kind of on main roads. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, laundromats are kind of on main roads. This is the only one that like a neighborhood kid could literally ride their bike to. Um, so with that being said, it was run by an American couple. The thing was an absolute cash cow. Uh, they got a little bit older. They probably ran it for 30 years. Uh, and they moved on. They sold it to a Korean gentleman. Um, while personally, I thought, you know, he was normal because, uh, you know, the, the, the checks always came on time and, you know, minimal issues as a landlord with it. Uh, apparently, you know, his clients didn't, didn't think too fondly of him. Uh, maybe first starting with that, he didn't really speak English. 
um, and that's a predominantly English speaking area. Um, on top of that, the place wasn't really kept in, 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 a, in, in a clean, you know, manner. Um, so obviously nobody wants to, you know, wash their dirty clothes in, in a dirty laundromat. Um, so slowly but surely, he kind of just, you know, was digging himself deeper and deeper uh, up until pretty much COVID came and he was just ready to get out. Um, up until pretty much March 2020, um, that was a fully functioning, fully operating uh, laundromat. I remember looking at the permits not too long ago from the speedies or whatever it was called. Um, again, at the time of him closing, everything was up. There had just been a recent inspection. Um, so that means all the water filtration and this and that, everything was working. Uh, I was actually going to develop the laundromat myself and sell it. Um, but just honestly, I don't really have the time to do that right now. Um, but I went in there with a bunch of guys and I really got a feeling of, of what's going on and the potential that that place has. Uh, everybody was in agreement that the place will, you know, like a field of dreams, right? If you build it, they will come. Um, again, all the equipment needs to be replaced. I'm just going to be straight up with you. Um, there is kind of a minor, you know, facelift that needs to happen there. I don't know, some paint, you know, replacing maybe, you know, some, some ceiling tiles or, you know, the floors or however you want to do it. I'm going to defer to you on that one. Um, but there's not really that much work that needs to go in there. Um, so with that being said, you know, that, that's the short story of what happened. That's the short story of how it got there. Um, obviously, we lost our anchor tenant, which was the retro fitness, also right around the time of COVID. Um, so that probably did nobody any favors. Um, but they're actually opening up a family dollar, dollar tree combo store in the former retro fitness space. Um, that is actually supposed to be, I think, the second or third largest family dollar, dollar tree in the country. Um, and again, so far, all the feedback that we've been getting back, people in the area are really, really excited for it to reopen. Uh, the pizzeria is actually taking one of the vacant spaces and expanding their store from 2,000 to 3,000 square feet. Um, and on top of that, we have a letter of intent out. Uh, there's, a, there's like a concrete slab on the opposite side of the parking lot. Uh, it's called a pad site. We have a we have an LOI out with Dunkin' Donuts in development on a drive-through Dunkin' Donuts restaurant in that in that uh, on that pad site. So uh, again, I know the the shopping center you know looks like it's going through a little bit of a tough time. Uh, definitely, that's the truth. Um, but we're at the tail end of that tough time, uh, and we're just really really excited to get some good tenants in there, do a lot of expansion, um, so that we as the landlords can also you know put a couple of dollars into the place. I like your style, Alex. I appreciate all the backstory. Funny thing, yep. I <laughs> I never ask about the previous laundromat operation because my my history is such that I I I, I have stores in three states. I've been doing laundromats right. for sixteen years. Uh, the most important thing that I'm always looking for every time, be it New York, Connecticut, New Jersey. I'm looking for infrastructure, uh -huh. like you said, and that's the bargaining chip that I'm excited about. And I appreciate Great. speaking directly to you because the yep. backstory is is pretty much always the same. You know, the <laughs> the knuckleheads that initially build the stores, truly, the people that build right. these laundromats almost never make money. They build the store, they spend all the money on environmental impact fees, all of the infrastructure yep. is very costly. Uh, in today's yeah. dollars, it's even worse, obviously, because you're not <laughs> even going to try. Uh, cards on the table. So yeah. I'm yeah. always after the infrastructure. Typically, the second or third operator, after it's been retooled, they try to sell it. There's always a, a million dollar price tag. And where we are at today, I would love to lease the space from you. I'm looking for a 15 year term. What I then Good. do, I go direct. You said you had a bunch of guys come in. I assume those were distributors. They were probably laundromat folk. Um, if you yeah. if you Google my name, you'll see that I know a little something about laundries. <laughs> but that, well, I, I heard it the minute you started talking. So. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Look, I paint yeah. the I paint. I could tell you in thirty seconds or thirty hours how to make this place successful. But you said it yourself. You don't have the time, and it takes tons of it. No. Not just up yeah, front, know. but ongoing. You, everybody yeah. in, thinks that these businesses are turnkey, absentee, you know, toss a grenade in and you make money. The truth is... Yeah, what, what, uh, what I learned is nothing goes that way. Sure, well, it, 
laundromats are pretty <laughs> damn close. I don't know dry cleaning. I don't know that business. I don't know car washes. What I know are laundries. Here's what I want to cut to. If the rent is commensurate and appropriate, not for an end cap, not for the three million cars that drive by every day, I have to talk laundries with you, my friend, because that's where I'm at. We do half our business on Sunday. We play catch up the rest of the week. And I don't want to come to you hat in hand in six months or six years, say, oh, I couldn't make it. I didn't really understand right. what was going to happen. I do understand. Right. And my debt service is usually double rent. Uh, and I drag the debt service throughout the entire lease, meaning at seven years, I'm retooling. In a good store, the equipment is going to be at end of life. You know, a 57 Chevy, the tranny goes bad. You replace the transmission. On an 87 Toyota Corolla, tranny goes bad. It's time for a new car. You know, in far too right. many laundromats, I've seen this store when it was operating. We've scouted right. it many times. Now that it's closed, I figured it was time to have a discussion with you. Bottom line, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I need to have a preposterous rate of rent for this to make sense. And as your advisor, if I was your cousin, I'd say, blow the laundromat out, get rid of it. It probably won't do you any good. I'm serious. But I'm right. the guy on the phone saying, if the rent makes sense, you know, 3% increases, yes. Uh, 15 years, I can do a five and two fives. I can do 20. It, to me, it doesn't right. matter. I'm not currently buying property. I'm not in the market, but I do want right. to lease the space from you. On a 15-year term, so, I, I have two questions. What's the square footage and what's the best you can do on a monthly rate? It's, it's about 2,000 square feet. Um, look, obviously, there's no rego negotiation on the tax. You know, we sign triple net leases over there. Sure. Uh, the taxes are what they are. The CAM is what it is. Um, I'm just going to tell you that it's, it's not a bargain rate over there. Um, some might even say that I'm asking for, you know, a premium on the space um, just because I believe in the potential of it. Uh, I've turned down a lot of offers. Um, despite people begging me and despite people talking about, you know, the time cost opportunity, which I understand all of that. But again, this is a little bit of a larger group. So, uh, you know, they don't mind maybe, you know, losing a couple bucks on the front end to make it back on the back end. Uh, so it, is it you know, your building or is it your family's building? Or you I work manage for my the... family's portfolio. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a family building. Okay. That's what I understood. It's a family building. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, look, I'm just going to tell you right away that just between the base rent and the cam and the taxes, you're probably looking between six and seven thousand dollars in year one. Well, you say that <clears throat> you say that like, you know, a laundry can't sustain that. And you're right. So you have a you know, you have some some options in front of you. The guy you have on the phone is the best plausible operator, hands down, because I understand what it takes. Ask me anything about. So honestly, I'm, I'm serious. I don't doubt that. I don't, well, no, I don't me, doubt it. Listen, ask me I'm, one I'm thing. So, but you looked, and I'm not, I don't mean to interrupt you. You look. I'll forget. You looked into operating it yourself, and you looked into right. the hazards, the pitfalls. Ask me one question about laundromats. Just one. What do you really want to know about running a place? Um. I mean, honestly, I, I have no questions. I'm not in the laundromat. What about business. this uh, card versus yeah. coin? Should you run this place yourself? Should you have a card in the, in the store? Should you do all debit cards? So you got to be thinking what, what, about what, that. What, what, yeah, what, what everybody kind of said is, is, is the, the trend these days is everyone does the cards these days. You'll lose. That's something I that agree I, with you. I agree with I you, which is why it wasn't. I agree, which is why I thought it wasn't that interesting to me. Look, you know, I'm a transparent guy. I'll be honest. Um, the way I was looking at it, I thought, oh, you know what? This place could be a little bit of an ATM machine, you know, when needed. Um, True, so but that's because, not even the know, biggest point. And my, my right. point is, I try to cut to the chase as well. And the biggest question is yeah. a potential new operator. Here's the thing. A distributor, I don't care who they are. I don't care their first or last name, where they're from, how many years they've right. been doing it. They sell laundry equipment. And a distributor will stand in front of you for an hour and a half, and they will talk to you about how great the card system is for you, well, the look, operator. Well, look, there's pluses and right? Because if I'm going to stand there and and run the laundromat, then then the coins is a no-brainer, right? If I have a key man that's my brother, then maybe the coins are still have. Oh, your brother's not going to steal that much. 
Right, but if I have a key man, that's my second cousin. You know what? Now the cards are looking awfully, <laughs> you know, awfully low exposure. Yeah, but you're so, again, um, again, you're. Yeah. L- let me finish. You're missing the point. A distributor will sell you a ninety thousand dollar system to start. That's the the card system. Okay, they'll talk to you till they're blue in the face about how great it is for you. You can charge fifty cents on Tuesday. Remember the old blockbuster <laughs> right. videos, right? You can get away with murder. You, you won't have to deal with dirty money. It's all true. Every word is true. All of it. Right. You know what they'll never mention? The silly customer. Consumers <laughs> hate card systems. The cards are RF chips. They cost you a dollar ten. That's the best. You, if you buy 20,000 of them, they're going to be a buck a piece. Now you're handing off to some Puerto Rican gal who doesn't really want to wash her clothes in a laundromat, but has to. You have to charge her a dollar ten, or are you going to eat that cost? Again, it right. goes down to one thing that a lot of folks don't think about: the consumers would rather go across the street to a nasty laundry with ten-year-old equipment than a card store. Crazy but true. Look, wow. I, I don't, wow. I don't blame you for saying that you have to collect. You said between six and seven. All I heard was fifty-five hundred, and. I need to look at it. I need to understand. It's not about <laughs> it's not about demographics. Again, right. I'm committing very differently, Alex, to 300, 350,000 in washers and dryers. It's not a dollar store while I'm I'm selling tchotchkes that I mark up from China. It's not a like you said, I don't know, a nail salon where I've got 12 cousins who happen to be Korean who are going to work there. Yeah, not no, I hear you, but at at the same time, you know, uh there's different, you know, ways of procurement for that three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh, of course, of course. Right. And the gamble for me, I can absorb the cost of a failing store with my good stores, yes. But I hear that. I want to hit home runs with these locations. Right. And no I, one I, goes into business. So. <laughs> give me your email address. I'll email you, and you know, yep. we'll, we'll put an LOI in front of you, and that way you can see that we're not bullshitting. That the reality Good. is we're, we're interested in moving forward if and when. Then you can crawl up my ass. You can look at, I'll send you some before and after pictures of our stores, what we do. It's not glamorous. You know, it's just really everyone says they think of the consumer. I can sell a billion hamburgers if I make them like McDonald's. Who wants to do that? No, thank you. I hear you. I hear you. Listen, you said you, said, you, said you heard 5,500. Uh, you know, there's no broker involved. Maybe we're not as far apart as we think. Yeah. Shoot me over an email. Let me know what you're interested in. Text me um, your email address. There's, there's, there's pending offers. Um, there's offers on the table. Uh, basically, the instruction that, you know, I've been, you know, instructed is, hey, we're not going to take any low ball offers. Um, and, and if we do take a low ball offer, it won't be until after the family dollar, dollar tree store opens uh, just to see kind of all the options that are out there. Again, full transparency on my end, but send over the LOI and uh, yeah, who knows? Like I said, maybe we're not that far apart. And like I said, there's no brokers involved on either side. So makes there's it a lot, lot of the ifs and whats and who's and buts. We, we like family dollar. That's laundromat people. That's fantastic. All right, man. Uh, text me your email address. I'm Danny D'Angelo. My partner is Mr. Marino. A couple of uh, Italians. I'll send you an email. D'Angelo and Marino. Where, where about are you guys from? Brooklyn. Sheepshead Bay. Brooklyn. I, I have a house in uh, Cave Creek, a place in Mexico. Life is pretty good. You got enough stores, you can do well. You're, we're, uh, uh, we're neighbors. We're neighbors. I'm also originally from Sheepshead Bay, and that's where my office is. There you go. Nice place to visit. Lit, is it lit, lit, Litman? Yep, L I T M A N. All right. Text me your email address. All right, very Thanks. good. Cheers. Over. Bye. <clears throat> you know, negotiating is really funny. It's really what I'm good at. And I want to ask you something. What do you what was the big takeaway from that phone call? Well, he was he really trying to sell us the location. He was mentioning all the what can happen, all the tenants that they might have. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. He was trying to sell us on the location. And it was so thick and so obvious. You, you, you didn't have to. I mean, I'll, I'll, you hear me on my YouTube all the time ask people, so what do you think of the call? And I'm like, nope, that's not what I'm thinking. That's not the gist of what I'm thinking. And it's something else. You're right. That was so thick 
and so obvious, I never asked him about the laundromat because I never ask any landlords about the laundromat. Never. I don't want to know what happened to the pre... It's a, it's a newbie mistake to call up and say, Um, sir, can you tell me what happened to the previous operator? Then he's on the phone thinking, I have the upper hand in this conversation because this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Why would I ask what happened? I know what happened. You're absolutely right. He was laying it on thick. Well, let me tell you about the laundry. Then he tells me the whole life story of the laundromat, and I'm just listening. Okay, let him talk. And then he says, by the way, I've got offers on the table. No, he doesn't. This store with new equipment can be a multi-million dollar operation. 100%. When he sees, my job is to instill this type of confidence, then send the LOI. He doesn't have offers pending. That's negotiating 101. Hey, there's a guy coming to look at it in 20 minutes. You better buy. Come on. Have you done a letter of intent yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to send, you already have it. He already sent yeah, his yeah, email yeah. address. So write the LOI for five grand and ask for 12 months of abatement. We'll see what happens. I think he'll call back. Wait, hold on. 12 months? Yeah. It, the, uh, the standard LOI, my standard LOI has 12 months free rent. It's already in there. I'll send it to you again. Fill it out. Don't be in a rush. You're not going to send it to him. You're going to send it back to me. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. It's the way it works. Another free laundromat in the chute. 